It's Vallejo model colour dark sea grey. I know this isn't really a proper primer, but I'm hoping it'll work out okay. I really hope this doesn't flake off down the line. So a few weeks ago, I noticed that Mel over at Mel's Mini Loft was painting some Tyranids. And they weren't just any old Tyranids, I'll have you know. They were a lovely Orchid Mantis themed Tyranids. They were a, I don't think I needed a in there, they were. You really should go and have a look for yourself. I'll put the link up here somewhere and also down in the description below somewhere. Now, as I was also about to be up to my neck in Tyranids, oh, I forgot to sort out the bloody squeaky chair again. Anyway, as I was about to be up to my neck in Tyranids too, well, I thought it would be fun to see if old Melly Mel fancied a hobby exchange of sorts. My proposal is that we each paint a unit of termagants in each other's scheme and send them across to each other for each other's armies. X Factor. Mel's having a crack at my Rogue Trader themed Tyranid army, which I started on the old Screamer Killer over here. He's sitting on the windowsill at the moment, like a good boy. And you can see her results up here. She finished before me, as so I'm a slacker. And I'm now about to do my best to recreate the Orchid Mantis scheme. Uh, this is supposed to be a mantis if you see me doing this. I think you have to have your like thumb and your finger together. And have like a bend of the elbow or something. I don't know. It's been a long time since I was a Kung Fu master. This is also going to push me well out of my comfort zone. So wish me luck. Before I got started, I made sure to take a lot of notes. Put it down, go to sleep, come back the next day, and then start working on something so that it... Now, after studying Mel's video masterpieces, I realized I just wasn't capable of following instructions. So what I'm going to try to do is use my own methods to come up with the same results. Emphasis on try. It might work wonderfully, and it might be a complete train wreck. That's the fun of YouTube, eh? Let's jump in. So using the grey I showed at the start of the video, I primed the termagants with my airbrush. Again, according to international law, all airbrushing footage must be in the lowest quality possible. This time I actually think it's a bit better than usual. It didn't take too long to give all those termagants good blasting. Eagle-eyed viewers will also spot a base of rippers which I'm also painting. I'm nice like that. For a bit of a brighter base to work with, I'm also going to apply a coat of Model Air White in a zenithal manner. This bottle has nearly run out by the way. Again using my airbrush I applied this to the tops and sides of the termagants. I tried my best not to get any underneath, leaving the grey for some free shading as it were. And with the white applied, you have this. It's so bright, it's blowing out on my camera. Marvellous. Now someone once asked me the other day what I filmed my YouTube videos with. Videos, videos. And to be honest, everything is filmed on my phone. This is a phone now, apparently. It's more like a data pad from Star Trek. Yes, number one. You can use your phone for filming now, number one. That's my Jean-Luc Picard impression, by the way. It's magnificent. So anyway, I'd love to upgrade to a better camera. And one day we might, but at the moment we're sticking with the old iPhone. If anyone would like to donate a couple of grand to pay for a nice expensive camera, then please feel free to do so. Anyway. Next up is some gloss varnish. This is to protect the white layer, which always seem to rub off easily and also help with the next steps. I run the gloss varnish through my airbrush with some thinner mixed in. After they are all primed and glossed up, we have this. 10 little termagants and a base of rippers. Now I have to admit, I wasn't sure if that gloss varnish layer was actually going to work. It was a bit of a gamble to be fair. Luckily, I think we got away with it. It's time for a mix. 
we are mixing Drucci Violet, I'm not sure if they still make this, and Lamian Medium. I think Lamian has something to do with goats, maybe? Using my mix, which I think was two parts medium to one part violet, I then give the termagants good washing over. If you see any pooling anywhere, it's a good idea to soak it back up. I tend to miss these a lot of the time and end up with little resin blobs. Whoops! With the wash applied, you now have some shaded termagants. That's what the wash was for, you see. Shading. This is so we can make a nice off-white for the skin. Now it was here when I think I might have cocked up and gone a bit too dark. I was thinking at the time maybe I should have thinned that wash down just a little bit more. More a lot more. But again I think we might have gotten away with it. I seem to get away with quite a lot you know. Usually chucking cat shit over my neighbour's fence. That's his f***ing cat anyway. Disgusting animals. I hate cats. Next up is some Vallejo model colour white, with a wrinkly label for reasons unknown. Using a big flat brush, I then give the termagants damn good dry brushing all over. I spent quite a long time on this as I wanted white skin with a hint of the purple in the shaded areas. And with the dry brushing stage finished, you have this. I actually managed to achieve my goal, and I think they look quite nice. Now a lot of people frown on the dry brush. They hate the dry brush. Oh, it's not a good enough technique for painting. It's a beginner's technique. Well, I disagree. I think it's wonderful, and I enjoy it. If you enjoy something in your painting, perhaps somewhere else in life, then don't ever be afraid to do it just because someone else says they don't like it. Unless it's theft, or adultery, or something like that. That's frowned upon. Next up, it's Vallejo model colour pink, or rosa. Using the pink, I then paint all the armoured areas on the termagants, and there's a lot. Some on the back, and some on the legs. I don't actually have any armour on my legs. Actually, I don't have any on my back, now I think about it. With the pink armour painted, we have this. I think they look really nice now. They remind me of those pink mushroom bubblegum flavour sweets. Are they Haribos? My word, I fancy some Haribo now. Talking about Haribo, I really do not like those adverts where they dub the adults' voices over with the kids' voices. I don't know why, but I find them really creepy. I just want to talk about this Harry Bros Dharmic Sweeties. I like the hearts because they make me feel love. See what I mean? Weird. Now, it was here where I was unsure as to what colour to paint those weapons. <laughs> Side. So, Vallejo light green and flat yellow. We're going to mix these together in a ratio of four parts yellow to one part green. It's the colour I use for orc skin, you know. Using that green mix, I then paint the weapons. Should we have gone blue? Will this be a mistake? Let's find out. With the green paint applied, we have this. I think it looks quite nice myself. What do you think? You can see I've left the armour panels on the bad dragon guns, as I want to paint those a different colour. Do any of you guys ever hit that sort of indecision wall when you're painting? You're flying ahead, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't know what colour to use here. And then you start painting a colour you've picked, and you start second guessing and think maybe you might have wished you'd gone for the other colour that was the other option. It is a pain, and I think to deal with it you just have to commit and move on, or just plan better. It's time to sort out my bone now, and the colour we shall use is Vallejo Model Colour Beige. Using the beige, I then paint the bone on the weapons. See, that's why we left it before. Oh, and all the hooves and blady bits. 
Why do they have blades for hands? Are there any Tyranid experts in here who can tell us? With all the bony areas painted, we have this. I say painted, what I mean is base coated, before you all start saying it looks like shit. Now a man I know once said he doesn't like swearing in YouTube videos. He said it's childish and cringy. Anyway, I do try my absolute best not to swear. Sometimes it just pops out though. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. Next up, we're using Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White. They say this is the best white since records began. We shall put that claim to the test. Why is this Null Noil clip in here? Ignore this. Using the bold titanium white, we then paint the eyeballs on the miniatures, the termagant's eyes and the gun's eyes. Now I'm not sure if those things are actually eyes. I just caught my hat there. Why would guy why would guys have eyes? Who is this guy? Why would guns have eyes? Are they its sights? See what I done there? I'll get my coat. It's Dritchy Violet again, and this time we're using it neat. I think that's a drinking term. Using the Dritchy Violet, I then gave all the pink armour panels a wash. A wash of paint, not a cleaning wash. I tried my best to make sure I managed to get it in all the nooks and crannies. With the wash applied, we have this. It's really darkened them down a lot. I now have to wait what seems like a day for them to dry. Other top YouTubers and painting experts say that washers take about 20 minutes to dry. They're never bloody dry in that time for me. Are they using a different wash? Am I using them wrong? Have I applied them too thickly? Why do they take so long to dry for me? Another shade now, the unpronounceable Soeliac Green Shade. If you do know how to pronounce it correctly, then please send your answers on a postcard to Games Workshop Headquarters. I'm sure they'll give you a lovely prize. Using the Cheliac Green Shade, we then apply it to all the green areas. I say all, I mean just the guns. We didn't paint anything else green, did we? With the Cedric Green Shade applied, we have this. This one seems to dry a lot quicker than the purple one. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe there's more drying agents in it. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. We have paint retarders for slowing the drying time. Is there any sort of additive we could put in there? Speed up! And I'm not talking about a hairdryer. Fan favourite wash up next, it's Agrax Earthshade. I use the Agrax Earth Shade to shade all the bony bits, all the hooves, knife hands and the other bony bits on top of the bad dragon guns. And then we wait for that wash to dry too. Oh, I mustn't forget to say we have this. So a few people on the line have noticed I use the term this quite a lot. This paper's really thick. Now it's mainly on my Instagram reels and my TikToks. <laughs> my TikToks. Anyway, that's because I have to cut these 30 minute long videos down into like a three minute chunk of videos. It's bloody hard, you know? I might just write a separate script for a different version going forward. And maybe see how that goes. Next up, we're making a mix of Lamian Medium and Volupus Pink in a one-to-one -one ratio. I feel like Tom Cruise in Cocktail. So we then apply that mix to all the slits and gashes on the miniatures. If anyone knows the correct term for these things then please let us all know in the comments below. And with all the gashes seen to, we have this. Luckily there's not a lot of wash, so it dries pretty quickly here. 
I suppose this is one way to get your washers to dry a lot quicker. Hardly put any of the bloody stuff on in the first place. Anyway, should we move on to highlighting now? Vallejo model colour pink first. I then repaint all the armour panels in the pink, leaving the wash from before in the recesses. Would it have just been quicker to recess shade leaving the pink? Possibly, but I feel like painting panels is faster than recess shading, I think. Well, it's definitely easier. With the panels repainted, we have this. You can see those shaded recesses now. I really think they look lovely, don't you? So next up, according to Mel, we have to do some sort of inverse highlight. <laughs> the panels get lighter the further you push into them. I've never tried this before. No one has. You're about to watch some cutting edge painting right now, folks. It's cocktail time again. Three parts pink to one part white. I may have made a mistake here, but we will get to that later. I paint this mix on all of those armour panels, leaving the edges the original colour. My brain found this really hard, as it was backwards to me. After that highlight was applied, we have this. It hasn't made a huge amount of difference, but I think the Pro Acryl paint is a lot weaker than the Vallejo one, so I should really have upped the white in the mix. My lesson from this is that when you're making mixes based on a ratio, try your best to stick with the same brands for the mix, because that way your drops will be equal. Hell, I don't even know if that makes any sense. I'm leaving it in regardless. Learning my lesson for the next mix, we're using Vallejo model colour white. This time, the ratio is 2 to 1. We then apply this new mix to the armour panels again. I try my best to leave the two previous layers showing. The closer we get to the centre of the panels, the lighter it needs to be. With that done, we have this. I'm not really convinced there's much of a change, to be honest. What do you guys think? If you are actually using this as a painting tutorial, I would suggest you skip every other step here in the pink highlighting phase and add, excuse me, and add more steps in at the whiter end of the pink highlight phase. You'll see why and what I mean when we get there, if we ever get there. Is that a song? Oh, it's you, not we. Bloody good song, though. I'll see you when you get there. If you ever get there. See you when you get there. Same paints, different ratio. This time it's one part white to one part pink. Again, we are applying the paint to an even smaller area, leaving the darker parts on the edges of the panels. My brain is really struggling to do this. With that mixture applied, you now have this. There's a lot of steps to this highlight. Surely there's a faster way. I have actually noticed, did I just say the L in that? I have actually noticed that I mix up a lot of past and present text in my video scripts and also a lot of I interspersed with a lot of we and I do apologize for that. Please don't report me to the hobby police again. Another cocktail and the ratio has swapped now. It's three parts white to one part pink. As before, we apply this highlight to the panels leaving the previous steps showing. When that highlight is applied, you have this. So this is when I cocked up. I made too many mixes at the pink end of the spectrum. What I should have done was land the plane. No, that's the wrong line. That's from something else. What you should have done was land your plane. You don't own that plane, the taxpayers do. Now what I should have done is added more mixes into the whiter end of the highlighting spectrum phase. This is really difficult to explain. Does that even make any sense? If it doesn't, just let me know and I shall try my absolute best to clarify. 
It still probably won't make any sense though. So it's that white now, Pro Acryl White. Let's see if it's as good as they say, shall we? Using the Pro Acryl White, we then paint the very centre of the panels as our final highlight, as it were. This was actually quite tricky to do because of where the highlights sat, but we got through it. As my old granddad used to say, Manage the best you can. With those highlights applied, we have this. Now I actually really like the look of them now. Well, I do feel there's still a little bit too much pink on those panels. I should have worked that white in earlier. Or... I could have started from a lighter pink, that way I wouldn't have had all those darker pink mixes, would I? Oh well, let's just move on now. So this week I've been mostly watching Mel's Mini Loft again as I'm studying how to imitate her bases for these termagants. I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet, but we will come up with something, I hope. How are you going to hold it? I feel... Clearly I'm very flustered. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> We're going back to Vallejo model colour pink. Using a toothpick or cocktail stick, are they the same thing? I then dot some pink dots all over the carapace armour areas. Don't forget the armour on the legs too, because I did a few times. With the dots applied, we have this. I think that's come out really nice. It's really tied it all together in a way that my eyes enjoy. Now it do be like that sometimes. You're painting away and you think, hmm, I don't think I like the look of this. And then BAM! You had that one specific layer. And it looks loads better. This, this is good now. This is good. I'm, I'm happy. I think the term is to trust the process. Oh, by the way, there's quite a lot of pages in this script that stuck the bloody sellotape to myself. There's quite a lot of pages in the script today. I think there's actually nine, which is a record. We should be on Guinness Book of World Records with Roy Castle tap dancing extraordinaire. I don't think, I think it was just called Record. Record Breakers, that's it. That was the name of the show. Anyway, let's do some more highlighting. We now return to our green mix. Four parts yellow to one part green. With the green mix, we then reapply it to all the green areas of the weapon, leaving the shaded parts in the recesses. These guns are tiny, so it was a tricky process. With that green mix reapplied, we have this. They're starting to come together now. We've done the Beatles song before, haven't we? We could do the Michael Jackson version, and I think we'll save that for another day. So we all know that Michael Jackson covered the Beatles song Come Together, right now over me. But I did once read that someone said John Lennon borrowed that song from someone else and then just slowed it down. I can't remember what the name of the original song was. I'm going to go and have a look. Okay, so according to experts on the line, the song in question was You Can't Catch Me by Chuck Berry. I sound like a quiz show host now. Here yeah, come a flat top, he was moving up with me, then come waving goodbye in a little old blue dog jitty. Another bloody good song. The next mix is eight parts yellow to one part green, and that's a lot of yellow. Using this mix, we then apply it to an even smaller area than before, leaving the darker colours towards the recesses. I'm actually trying to highlight these in a volumetric manner. If anyone needs that explaining, then please let me know. Not that I'd be able to. With that highlight applied, we have this. I'm really enjoying this green now. It's really nice and bright. Veterans to the channel will be able to tell you that this is the same green recipe. Ye yes, will tell you this is the same green recipe I actually use for. Well, you dropped it then. For orc skin. Hmm. Actually, did I mention this earlier in the video? No, I didn't. That can stay in then. This time we add only a teint of green into the yellow. It's pretty much pure yellow with just a hint of the green. 
Using this mix, we then add a final volumetric highlight to the green areas of the Bad Dragon weapons. And with that done, you have this. I've just noticed a bit of a cock up. Can any of you eagle-eyed viewers spot it? Now it would appear here I painted the termagant's fingers the same colour as the gun, which was a mistake. But the weird thing is, the bottom fingers I painted correctly and then ignored the top fingers. Oh well, live and learn I suppose. Some people tell you not to highlight your mistakes, but also some other people like to see realism involved in these videos. They like to know when things didn't quite go as planned, and this is one of those moments. What do you guys think? Do you like to see the cock-ups and everything in a realistic manner? Or do you like to see all that edited out and have it look absolutely perfect and nothing went wrong honest? Do you like it when I acknowledge my mistakes? Such as buying this t-shirt. Actually, no, this isn't a mistake. This is probably the best t-shirt anyone's ever owned. We now return to Vallejo model color beige. Using the beige, we repaint all of the horny bony areas with the beige, but leave the Agrax earth shade we applied earlier in the recesses. With all those beige areas reapplied, you have this. Now it was at this point when I think my horny colour wasn't quite right. I think I maybe should have gone with something a bit darker than beige, maybe a darker brown perhaps. You'll have to let us all know what you think in the comments below. Next up, it's a mix of three to one beige and white. I then highlight all the horny areas with this new mix. Again, this may have been a mistake and I shall explain in a moment. With that done, we have this. So I was thinking that first highlight layer was probably actually a bit redundant, a bit like when we did the pink. It didn't really achieve much, did it? I should have probably just skipped over that layer and moved on to the next one and fixed this bloody squeaky chair. Let's carry on, shall we? But before we carry on, I just want to try something. Another mix now, and this time it's three parts white to one part beige. I use this mix to highlight only the very edges of the horny bits on the guns and on the hooves and knife hands and things. I still think I could have probably just jumped to this step and left out the previous step. Anyway, with that last highlight applied, you have this. So I wasn't 100% happy with my horny bits. I felt at this stage that my horny bits were a bit on the pale side. They needed a little something. A little tinkering or zhuzhing up, as Jamie Oliver would say. Let's see what we can come up with. It's a pot of Seraphim Sepia Shade. I applied the sepia wash to all of those bone areas. This helped tie the highlight together and also darken them back down a bit. That's double duties right there, folks. With that shade applied and dry, we have this. Now, I think it's looking a lot better now, but that is subjective. What do you guys think? Let us all know how you would have done it in the comments below. Next up, it's some Vallejo model colour fluorescent orange. I thinned this orange and then painted it on all the eyes of the miniatures. I tried not to forget the eyes on the guns. Also, I didn't worry too much if I went over the lines as it would add a little OSL to give me a glowing eye effect. After a couple of coats of the orange, we have this. Now, I'm not sure if Tyranids do have glowing eyes, but I thought it would be a cool idea. Also, I used orange, as I believe that's part of a colour triad with purple and green. Purple, which is on the skin, the armour, more of it pinky, and then green on those bad dragon guns, and then orange on the eyes. I probably got the colour triad theory completely wrong, but it did make me feel quite clever when I did it. So let me have that one, hey? Back to the Pro Acryl White. Using the white, I then dot in the center of those glowing eyes where I think the light would be brightest. 
As I'm a Muppet, it would appear you can't see as my hands are covering the shot. I do apologise for that and again feel free to report me to the hobby police. With those glowing white dots added, we have this. Now my worry is these glowing eyes are easy. Maybe too easy. I've now got into the habit of putting glowing eyes on absolutely everything and lenses as well. Because it's just so much faster than painting all those reflective lenses and gradients and reflections and things. What do you guys think? Am I cheating? Shall I carry on with it? Should I give up with the glowing eye fascination? Again, let us all know in the comments below. Maybe you do the glowing eyes. Okay, so next up it's Vallejo Model Colour Flat Earth. We then paint all the bases in this brown colour. This is my go-to brown basing colour. It actually reminds me of chocolate when it dries. With the brown applied, we have this. See? Chocolates. I wouldn't recommend eating them though. I doubt they are tasty. Now these remind me of those soaps you sometimes find. Well, the idea of it reminds me of those soaps that you sometimes find in those special fancy shops. You know, the ones that smell really nice and look like sweets. They come in interesting flavours, like lemon and orange. <laughs> now, is it just me, or does anyone else want to eat them when they see them and catch a whiff? It really tricks my brain. Next up, it's Vallejo Model Colour Beige. With the beige, we then give the bases a good dry brushing. Don't worry if you go too thick here, as the next stage will sort that out. Hopefully. With that done, we have this. Now it looks less like chocolate and more like a biscuit. That's a cookie to all you Americans out there. I don't know what they actually call a biscuit. Now I probably should have said before, but we're starting to work on the bases now. The base style we are going for is the sort of jungle theme, and I'm thinking Jurassic Park. A bit like Mr. Ikea plant here. Actually, he's not, why do I call him Ikea plant? He's real. Anyway, talking about Jurassic Park, I really liked the first movie, and I think the rest are absolutely awful. To tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if I've even seen the last one or two. The one with the raptor in the bedroom, something in the bedroom. Which one was that anyway? Was that the last one or the one before the last one? Okay, so next up it's Agrax Earthshade. I thinned the Agrax Earthshade with a little water and then applied a good slopping of it onto those cookie bases. Cookie Monster would be salivating right now and that's because Cookie Monster is awesome. With that wash applied to the bases, we have this. Now I have to wait a while for them to dry. I want to know what you guys do while you're waiting for your bases to dry. Do you paint other stuff? Or do you try and speed along the painting drying time with a hairdryer? I guess the other option is to just call it quits for the day. Now, by the way, if you want to get your hands on your own Leviathan set, then check out the link up here somewhere. I'll put one down in the description below too. We now return to the Vallejo model colour beige. We then re-dry brush the bases with that beige. This time we try our best not to put too much paint on. Start with a little and just add as necessary. It's very easy to just build it up and not so easy to take it off again. With that last dry brush layer on, we have this. They look exactly like what I wanted. So that's good. Now I love it when you're painting away and something actually comes out like how you imagined it in your head. You've actually achieved your vision as opposed to it coming out completely different and wrong, which sadly happens to me quite a lot. To perform our next layer, we need to take the termagants off the handles as the handles touch the sides and we need full access. We then return to Vallejo model colour, Flat Earth. I then thinned the flat earth and begun rimming the termagants. I think it's always best to do this in a few smooth coats as you want your rimming to be smooth. Thick paint can make the rims look a bit rough and we don't want that. 
With the rimming completed, we have this. 10 rimmed termagants and a base of rimmed rippers. Now usually we would leave it there, but today we can't. We're going to go for that jungle themed base. And you know what the jungle theme means? Foliage. Let's go. Now unfortunately, the foliage I require is somewhere amongst this huge pile of stuff in my garage. I moved here about six months ago and haven't gotten around to sorting through all of this. I've a horrid feeling what I need is at the far end and at the very bottom. Oh well, wish me luck. Now after about three hours worth of garage diving, I finally found what I needed. Okay, so next up we need some glue for the foliage. This time, the glue I'm using is PVA glue, and this one's a good one. Using an old brush, I then paint on some little patches of glue onto the bases, and then I give them a dunk in my first foliage mix. It's like a sort of clumpy flock stuff. Next up, I found some of this. It's some sort of green lichen. This stuff is made by Javis. I bought this about five years ago for my Elysian drop troops. Here it is out of the bag. It actually looks organic and reminds me of broccoli. I wonder if you can eat it. <laughs> it tasted salty. Why did it taste salty? So using the same method as before, we add some little clumps of lichen to the bases. I tried to stand them up in a realistic manner. It was actually pretty tough, to be fair. I didn't want to just leave it at that though. I also added some little grass tufts that I had laying about. I'm not sure the colour is very realistic though. It looks a little corny. Get it? Corny? Now while I put my paints away, I just want to give a big shout out to all my channel members and Patreons. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bobzilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Marrington, and Dr. Lee. I really appreciate you guys, and I love you all. All right then, before we get to the final reveal, I just wanted to show you something interesting on that lichen bag. I've still got quite a lot of it left here, as you can see, but if you read the instructions here, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Edward. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. Have I been doing that on the wrong side all video? Without further ado, let's check out the finished article, shall we? And here we are, 10 little termagants and one base of rippers. As a whole, I'm actually really happy with how they turned out. I really like the white and pink colour scheme and the green guns I feel actually look very nice. I'm not really sure I pulled off Mel's white to pink blend and I probably need a bit more practice with that, but the little pink dots did go a long ways to hide my shortcomings there. The glowing eyes is another contentious point. I'm still on the fence if I think that was a good idea or not. I am, however, very happy with the bases. All that extra effort and garage diving paid off, I think. The next thing to do is get these in the post and off to Mel over in the States. I hope they have a safe trip. Now make sure you check out Mel's videos too. If you want to see more videos in this Tyranid log, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.